Hello everyone, welcome to another video where today we're actually going to be following a Tazia player. Uh, now, I do believe that this Tazia player here actually with Amir is at like a 31% win rate or something crazy. Yeah, this is probably the best Tazia player we have seen in a while, um, at least since we've moved over to, to squads in the past, I think, two seasons. Since season three and going into season four, this player has been popping off and doing like infinite damage numbers doing everything a team needs and more okay that's kind of crazy i have not i'll be real with you <clears throat> i have not watched too many tazia players nor do i have a whole lot of information when i think of a tazia player i'm thinking like ghost electricity and i'm thinking like pari i'm not <laughs> i haven't <laughs> I, I haven't really sunk my teeth too deep into a tazia so i'm kind of really interested to see uh where this one goes and another really spicy thing about this one and the reason why we picked this this Tazia player and this Tazia like in game specifically is that they use a unique headset or headpiece. Sorry. Yeah, they have been going Cyber Stalker, which I I don't understand why yet. Well, I mean we'll see in this game, but previously this player was going like any other amp headpiece, usually following Dragon's Fury if they got a free force core or Sultans for the CDR or yeah, Sultans because. Sultans is a very like well statted item. It's 83 amp CDR movement speed still. Like Dragon's Fury, which is a force core, is 69 amp and 15% CDR. And the only reason that it's that low is because the passive is very strong. But Sultan is 83 amp. That, just, that does not feel fair. Oh yeah, and, and it's, it's only a treat. It's, it's just it's well yeah. statted. It's a cooldown headpiece. There's a lot of good pros to it. Also, I don't know if you saw what. Artazia just did, but not many Tazia players know about doing this anymore ever since they've removed Tazia's ability to use sword on people multiple times. Um, but Tazia has a combo where you get sword and then you throw W um, behind your opponent and then you push them into that so that you get the knockback into the stun and there's just so many glass shards on the floor, you just play the fight from there. Also, he is just the movement oh my god like the, literally the fact that this looked like oh well you know early unlucky moment they're gonna get like killed and tp to their team no 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 they just got two kills and they're still alive right now probably gonna go down now i, I assume maybe going for another one oh like god. a second like what the theo man dude what is going on this Tazia player makes the character look so simple. He's and not, then he's not even done. He's still cooking. He's ready to keep fighting. He's gonna get another kill. Oh my god. Plus one. Oh my god. Are we are we just gonna keep running it back? <laughs> oh, are we going for another round? Oh my god. We're this is a 1v3 kill. by the way. <laughs> kill. No, wait, man. Holy shit. Oh, okay. It took a 1v4 for us to finally go down. <laughs> He would have won that too. That's actually insane. Okay, uh, yeah. So Tazi as a character, uh, we just kind of witnessed can do incredible stuff if you know how to like utilize her. Do you want to maybe go over some of the basics of her kit? Because actually, I'm not too familiar with her her basics of her kit actually, and how she usually functions. I know like she dashes to the glass shards, I believe, or ice shards. Yeah. So. Tazia is a character that works completely around her glass shard mechanic. Um, a lot of her damage is locked behind knowing how to use them when you can use the proper cooldowns to get them up. Uh, like your passive gives an, a free auto, an empowered auto attack mm -hmm. that drops a glass shard when it lands, and your Q also drops a glass shard when it lands. But it's a skill shot that you have to you have to hit. That is probably the best way and the hardest way for her to get her glass shards. But gotcha. yeah, the the biggest thing about Tazia is you get four glass shards and the, on the floor you pick them up and then you get your glass sword. The glass sword gives a knockback and a lot of damage. So Tazia's a lot of the time you'll see them just trying to get glass shards on the floor, dashing to them. Uh, dashing to a shard gives you a little shield, a bit of AOE damage and picks up shard. So you dash over to the shard, get a sword, and then start pumping out damage. Right. Another small thing about Tazia that I don't know if many people know, Tazia players do, but regular players wouldn't understand that Tazia's R picks up any shards that is in 
the area when she presses the button. So if you have three shards on the floor and then you press R on those shards, it picks up all those shards for you. Meaning that you can you can start pumping out some crazy combos going throw, like throwing a sword onto someone because a sword drops two shards if it connects. Then also pushing them into the W as we saw earlier. Dropping your ult on that gives you another sword because your W gives you two shards if it connects. It's just so many different ways that you can start resetting your abilities, giving new combos out. She's such a high skill cap character that there isn't like basics to this character's kit. She is all just know what's going on and figure out how to do it right. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. And also, I, I'm like getting like stressed out here. She's she's sitting on um, she sat on her tree craft. She's holding onto a meteor and a four star right now. Yeah, it's it's giving me anxiety. I've been but having anxiety. We grab another. <laughs> and now she's got another tree, man. What is going on in this game? Are we Please gonna craft, craft eventually? Please craft. She tried to offer the oh. meteor, but team said no. So, okay. I think yeah, the meteor makes sense. Our team just doesn't want it. We actually just grab the cyberstalker early and our holy orders early, which. This cyber stalker pick, I, I'm still, I'm still a bit lost. I think after watching that first fight, though, Pistazia plays so close into melee range that it makes sense. We're just right beside them. Tazia needs to auto attack anyways because of her passive. She wants to get that empowered auto attack off, but, and drop the glass shard. Right, and it, it, just, it, it makes sense. Back. Well, yeah, because like she'll get the empowered auto on top of another in power to her auto, right? So it's just double dip. Yeah. And Cyberstalker, a lot of people don't know what this item actually does. Um, it gives you an empowered auto that uh, re increases the amount of skill damage that your opponents take, which for Tazia is pretty massive. Uh, but I was also looking just now to see what augments this guy runs. Because for a lot of Tazia players, if you see how many abilities she's throwing out, they they really enjoy Endorphin. This guy just it just has drinks. On top of all of the buttons he's pressing right now, there's drinks on top of it. Yeah, and it looks like um, looks like Calvacate and Embolden, right? Extra defense, trying to be that tanky side of things. Yeah, because this is a character that needs to be all in your face and. If we randomly run into a, a heart that has all the damage that she needs to kill us, then we don't get to press our buttons as much. It becomes very hard to play the game. Yeah, the, the other thing that's kind of interesting here too is thinking about the, um, the, going back a little bit to the headpiece, who else really runs it? I, I know Emma's have tried it a little bit. Uh, um, there's not a whole lot of characters that utilize the, the setup. Yeah, I know Emma tested it for a while. I think some Nathapon players were doing a bit of testing. And I saw one Aya player that was trying it out. Because I is Q <laughs> and trigger the first part, the empowered auto attack part. And then it does the skill damage after. So if you're playing Cyberstalker Emma with a Bracelet of Scotty, then you can use the Q to trigger the Cyber Stalker and the Scotty and then throw the W in their face after while they're slowed. And it makes sense, but Aya doesn't like to play that close range, which was the issue. And I think that's why the players swapped off after. That's really funny though. <laughs> yeah, I think that was my favorite character to see it on. Also, the damage coming out. What is that damage? Like, every time I want to call Tazia a weak player, I just look at this player, or uh, every time I want to call Tazia a weak character, I, call, I look at this player and it's just insane. Yeah, that's actually crazy. And also talking about, uh, just going back because they're not running endorphins, like, look at the mana getting chunked. Like, she she runs out of mana so quickly, like, she is just eating drinks left and right. Yeah, the amount of times that on Tazia, you just run out of mana and you're wondering, wait, why can't I, why can't I win this fight? Looking over, you're out of drinks that you you made infinite at of the... Sorry, my brain is breaking watching this Tazia player play, but... Happens to all of us. Yeah. Like, watching this Tazia just make a lot of drinks, utilize them, press all your buttons. Like, Tazia looks like a fighting game. 
believe I'm already yeah gone. actually that's a good description she does make this literally a fighting game for the simple fact that we watch her dance through so many players and you're just like how is she how is she still going like she's just taking everyone on it doesn't matter I need to go off for a bit. this I wonder what we go next because uh we have the option of hitting our CDR cap which it looks like it's we're gonna do going for the mithril for our arm piece yeah, definitely. I mean, also just in general, Tendulus is just such a massive upgrade, not only for the 5%, but that's a 30, 30 amp increase. Like that's probably one of the highest amp increases that you can go from when you're running Tendulus on your arm piece. Uh, I didn't realize it was that high. 30, yeah. 30 amp is so massive. And Tazia's amp scalings also aren't low. So like she's getting so much damage from this. No, absolutely. Uh. Yeah, I mean, now we're just kind of wondering, like, you know, going for objectives to see until we can get some fights happening, I guess. Yeah, I wonder if we actually end up getting our tax skill anytime soon, though, because <laughs> uh, oh, we've been on <laughs> tax skill one all game. We have the credits to go tax skill two. Okay, but... tax, tax skills are so funny to me because we've had we've had this like meta shift on tax skills over and over again, mm -hmm. where like we've had. I remember. Oh, she just TP'd about to run into someone. Uh, <laughs> We, where we've had these moments where we've seen just like no tax skill upgrades like back in season one where it's like oh just don't level it up and like whatnot and then we went to like no you always level up tax skills and to like back to oh these ones just don't level them yeah i think for a lot of players also i'm that demo alt i i respect the attempt it just didn't come through um but for tax skills i think a lot of players started season one thinking oh you know like i played this game without tax skills before so why would i need tax skills now and then we moved into realizing that some tax skills just are really strong when you get tax skill three so a lot of players were just instantly tax skill two instantly tax skill three um but now we're coming into a place where people realize that certain tax skills aren't the most important to get leveled at all times um because if you're going for a full kill on a team, you're getting the cooldown reset. So like the second that you full kill a team, you go from a, I think, I think that totem, or I guess it's, yeah, it's a 180 second cooldown. Correct, level, yeah. Or, yeah, it is three minutes cooldown. It goes from a three minute cooldown and then you'll take it all the way down to like a 60 second cooldown. If you wipe a team, it's basically up again already. And yeah. if you're taking two fights back to back from there, then maybe we had a different issue. <laughs> right. Oh, wait, the F-stop kind of stopped the combo, <laughs> but oh my God, that, that damage is disgusting. I also just realized that Nathapon might make Cyberstalker so much better because the Cyberstalker is still stacking up on someone while they're in the Nathapon ult. Oh, that's actually kind of nasty. So you can just have Nathapon ult someone, you walk up beside them, and before any combo comes through, you get that auto attack off, infinitely more damage. Yeah, that actually, <laughs> that might be kind of crazy combination then, oh, or at least the, the interaction wise. Yeah, I don't think that many people would start building Cyberstalker Nathapon for that, but maybe if you have enough amp characters on your team, it's the play. We can hope. We can hope for the day that we see that. When <laughs> we bring that on to you, just like yep. Cyber Stalker Nathapon. I don't know. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe I need to pull it out. Get get some players to notice. Cyber Stalker is a funny item that can work. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, the other thing, too, um, the top of attack skills, like exclusively that we we're talking about, where they're not being leveled up, is like, I feel like it's Totem, E Shift, Quake. These three, like, unless you feel like you you want to, like, get them to three, you just leave them on one. Yeah, and I, what I want to see for changes on that is I hope to see one become very weak. I think, e, or I think a lot of uh, the first tax skills, like, first level tax skills should just be somewhat of a joke. Uh, and then level 2 becomes somewhat of like a normal thing and level 3 becomes their slightly overpowered form. Man, okay, but, wait, I, I, I don't know, mm -hmm. I don't know. Blink, 
pisses me off so many <laughs> times where because like most times you don't you never use level one blink right you always level it as soon as yeah. you can but the times where i am attacked and i have to use level one blink and i'm not used to the range because i use it once every hundred games i'm like oh you motherfucker i can't go over this goddamn wall like are you kidding me <laughs> it's 2.5 range i think that is yeah it's not too far for a lot of characters and there's actually a lot of walls that are just slightly too short for blink to make it over yeah um but also i didn't notice it until now we were on hermes i yeah i saw that i assume that they just they got something and had to slam it looking at like the team yeah just yeah they, they had a four score they had to slam because the team the rest of the team didn't didn't need it yeah i mean the rest of our team can't really use red shoes the same way that we can. Also, we're just <laughs> we're just walking through red for Wick. Okay, not gonna lie, I, love her that I, much. I liked the play if they did it in red. I actually would have liked yeah. it more if they actually pulled it downwards and did it in red um, instead of bringing it all the way to hospital. I thought that we were going to go and do it in red, and then our team was uh, was walking around, and we're just one v twoing off in this side. Nathapon. Our, I think our Nathapon saw we were winning a bit too hard and tried to even out the fight a bit. <laughs> Wickline, Wickline! <laughs> Wait, Wickline's dancing! <laughs> There's the Wick dance. <laughs> I didn't know that Wickline could do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Wickline can bust out some moves every once in a while, you know? Oh, oh this is Oh, scary. we have a new team coming in as well. Don't think we get the blood. Yeah, we're just going to give it up. I think it's fine. I mean, they have blood shoes. They've got Wickline. Yep. I guess I can trust you. I think this this game so far just it shows why mastering a character like Tazia can be so impactful. Like you just become so good at a character that not many people understand and that has so many different ways to be useful. Because a lot of these fights she's like she's the assassin, she's the front line, she's like dashing between everyone on their team, disrupting the fight. Yeah, exactly. Like she's she's doing so much damage to just push someone completely out instantly, like like, I think that Abigail multiple times this game has walked too close to Tazia, not understanding that Tazia could just take her from a full to almost no HP without, like, any effort. Yeah, and then, like, a lot of people don't realize it, but Tazia's AoE damage is also so insane. Like, when she's hitting the Abigail, if Heart walks a bit too close, then Heart just loses all of her health as well. Yeah, because everything she does except for Q does AoE, right? Uh, well, her sword Q does AoE as well, so everything she does technically does have AoE. Yeah, definitely something you don't want to mess with then. That is for sure. Yeah, what I'd like to see out of Tazia players eventually is switching off of Vamp, but I think it's just, it's too good for them. They... Okay, what would you want it to swap it off to, though? Um... I mean, I'm I'm always a Sentinel nerd. I love Sentinel too much. Oh, okay, okay. Because, like, okay, here's the thing, though. I think that Vamp does the same thing that Sentinel's supposed to do, where it's, like, trying to keep them more sustained out of the fight, because, obviously, Tazia can live a long time in the fight by dodging abilities and getting shields. So, <laughs> Sentinel would do the same thing, but then they're losing their damage increase, and we mentioned she does have a good, like, amp scaling, so kind of question of, like, less damage, but more utility for the team. It does make sense to uh, to run vamp a lot of the time, especially in solo queue. But I'd I'd like to see the the Sentinel Tazio be pulled out one day. For sure. Oh, but, this is gonna be an anticlimactic game. Um. Oh, well, we this, have... this is the final fight, I think. Oh, or like, oh my God. Oh, okay. Well. Anticlimactic, you say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. Well, the best part is, we didn't even auto-attack the ISIL. We didn't proc our Cyber Stalker on him. That was just Tazia raw damage. Does, does Cyber Stalker have, like, the best stats in comparison to other items? 85 amp, comparative to what? What's the... Um, well, sadly it doesn't. As I was saying earlier about, um... What is the headpiece called? Uh, turban? Sultan's Turban, yeah. Sultan's Turban stats are just slightly they might actually be slightly ahead if you depending on what you value because I'm thinking turban just amp is, yeah in terms of amp it is 83 amp meaning it's two amp behind and it's just a tree 
and then on top of that it gives you movement speed and the same amount of CDR. So it might, like stat wise it's not the best and I think that's why most people have been steering away from it, but for a character like Tazia where you want to be weaving in the auto attack anyways, it makes sense, but also we're somehow losing this fight for a bit. Yeah, Our Nathapon is on the floor. I, I was wondering that too. I was watching this and I was like, my god, this 2v3 and they were winning this. Like, and Tazi has such a great engage. Nathapon was just like, I want to make it fair, you know? Yeah. I, mean, I think a lot of it was just Martina damage. But yeah, that's the end of the game for them. Yeah. That uh, damage coming out from Tazia just. I'm surprised by it every time I see someone that understands what her kit's supposed to do. I I mean, I know throughout most of that game, we didn't see anything like super crazy. Most of the time it was just like Tazia found a target, instant assassinated, nuked them, and then the fight kind of just steamrolled from there. But the beginning of that game just blew my mind at what a Tazia player can do when you have the hands and understand the kit just to go crazy on people. Yeah, sadly, we don't have too many people playing Tazia at this level, but having any, like, being able to watch any player do what this Tazia player does is, like, it just feels so good. It makes me want to walk in Tazia. Yeah, okay, I, I see, that's so funny, because you, you, you have the urge to play Tazia, I have the ver urge of, like, please, please, no one, no one get to this level. I, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I'm going to just be a fat dog and die to you if you play Tazi at this. Like, I'm just going to miss everything and you're going to dash past me and instant kill me. Yep. Uh, once Tazia, I think once we have enough Tazia players that play at this level, she'll probably receive the same treatment that Shoichi gets, where you have a few too many really good players on the character and then the character gets nerfed. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, but until then, we only have very few Tazia players that play at a high enough level, so she is kind of just not going to get buffed, but not going to get nerfed. She's going to float around for a while. Maybe we'll see more people pick her up. Maybe we'll see people drop her, and then, uh, and then she'll get changed according to that. Yeah, well, we'll have to see. Uh, we'll have to see if it keeps cooking with this headpiece, though, because like uh, I don't know, it seemed it seemed cool. I don't know how much value we actually got out of that game from it, but it looked good. I mean, stat wise, it's it's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, and we did just get a free four score at the beginning of the game, so why not? <laughs> yeah, why would I go the normal tree headpiece when I can just use my four score upgrade? Easy. All right, and that's it for this video. Thanks everyone for uh, staying by, and we'll we'll see you in the next one.